Well, I see you dragging your bones back here again to see another awful movie. They're so bad they were filmed on cellulite instead of celluloid. I'm Mod Dr. Angus Macabre! The rootin' tootin' us, Mod Dr. East, North, South, and West of Parts Unknown. And this here is Mod Scott Movies! Where we keep discussing my bad movies running night and day to keep me awake during my mad experiments. They're so bad, they're not only driving me mad, but they're making me mad too. I could make a better film than these with one head tied behind me back. Today's movie is House on Haunted Hill, brought to you by William Castle. He was famous for using gimmicks in his movies. For this masterpiece, he supplied theaters with a skeleton to zip line over the audience. It didn't help any, but it did take their mind off of the bad to the bone flick. Castle called the gimmick Emerge which just goes to show a truly successful mod experiment first really needs to have a totally daft name. It doesn't really matter what you do after that. House on Haunted Hill features horror icon Vincent Price. He had a nice acting career going until some wise guy put him in House of Wax and he turned into the face of the new generation of horror. Kind of a poor man's Boris Karloff, which makes some sense considering his hair looks like he stole it off a Bride of Frankenstein. He really ran the gamut of scary roles. I think I've turned into a fly at one point. I've got to admit, I've had a few of my own, shall we say, mishaps, but nothing that didn't make me stronger. Now you got to be strong to watch movies like this. Well, I can hear a buzzer going off somewhere. Must be some kind of half-baked experiment ready to come out of the oven. So, I better go check it. Let's get this show on the road. Roll it, Igor. The screenwriter had some trouble thinking of some dialogue. This could turn out to be a wee bit dull. The ghosts are moving tonight, restless, hungry. May I introduce myself? I'm Watson Pritchard. In just a minute, I'll show you the only really haunted house in the world. Since it was built a century ago, seven people, including my brother, have been murdered in it. Since then, I've owned the house. I've only spent one night there, and when they found me in the morning, I, I was almost dead. I'm Frederick Lauren, and I've rented the house on Haunted Hill tonight so that my wife can give a party, a haunted house party. <laughs> She's so amusing. There'll be food and drink and ghosts, and perhaps even a few murders. You're all invited. If any of you will spend the next 12 hours in this house, I'll give you each $10,000. 
or your next of kin in case you don't survive. Ah, but here come our other guests. Well, the movie was just getting a little bit ahead of itself better for a minute. The writer's still stuck, so he's just floating a couple ideas. Still, no reason for him to lose his head. It was my wife's idea to have our guests come in funeral cars. She's so amusing. Her sense of humor is, shall we say, original. I dreamed up the hearse. It's empty now, but after a night in the house on Haunted Hill, who knows? This is Lance Schroeder, a test pilot, so no doubt a brave man. But don't you think you can be much braver if you're paid for it? And I happen to know that Lance needs the 10,000 I'll give him, if he's brave enough to stay all night. This is Ruth Bridges. You've no doubt read her column in the newspapers. She says her reason for coming to the party is to write a feature article on ghosts. She's also desperate for money, gambles, also desperate for story ideas, apparently. Feature stories usually go in the living section of a newspaper, which ain't where you're gonna find ghosts, if you catch me drift. You've already met Watson Pritchard, a man living in mortal fear of a house, and yet he is risking his life to spend another night here. I wonder why. He says for money. This is Dr. David Trent, a psychiatrist. He claims that my ghost will help his work on hysteria. But don't you see a little touch of greed there? Around the mouth and eyes? This is Nora Manning. I picked her from the thousands of people who work for me because she needed the 10,000 more than most. Supports her whole family. Isn't she pretty? The party's starting now. And you have until midnight to find the house on Haunted Hill.
Well, where is everybody? It isn't a very warm welcome, is it? Only the ghosts in this house are glad we're here. Are we all strangers to each other? Don't you two know each other? I'm afraid I don't even know your name. I'm Nora Manning. Lance Schroeder. Is Frederick Lauren a friend of yours? I've heard of him, but I've never met him. I work for one of his companies, but I've never seen him. I've never met the man either. Just a phone call. Do you know him? No. Well, then you're the only one of us who does. I don't know him. All the details about running the house were done by mail. He's quite wealthy, isn't he? Millions. And uh, five wives, I believe. Four, I think, so far. A $50,000 party for only five people is a little steep, even for a millionaire. <laughs> well, if I were going to haunt anybody, this would certainly be the house I'd do it in. Who closed the door? This thing's made of solid steel. Unfortunately, still alive. Is your face on yet? Oh, now this ought to be good. Some real horrific face transplant mod doctoring right on screen. Let's watch. Dust and dirt everywhere, and the water barely trickles. Couldn't you have had the place cleaned? Atmosphere, darling. You know how ghosts are. They never tidy up. That's a very fetching outfit, but hardly suitable for a party. I'm not going to the party. Mm, the spend the night ghost party was your idea, remember? Since it's going to cost me $50,000, I want you to have fun. The party was my idea until you invited all the guests. Why all these strangers? Why none of our friends? Friends? Do we have any friends? No, your jealousy took care of that. I had a reason for inviting each guest. I wanted kind of a cross-section, from psychiatrist to typist, and from drunk to jet pilot. They share one thing, they all need money. Now let's see if they're brave enough to earn it. And you call this a party? Could be. Why do you always do that? It spoils the champagne. It might explode. Never does. Would you guarantee that? That isn't funny, Frederick. Make a good headline. Playboy kills wife with champagne cork. Will you join me? No, thank you. Just a sip might improve your humor. My humor is fine, thanks. And I haven't poisoned it. It's always good to know that. Have some. You'll enjoy the party more. Go on. Your trust is so touching. And I'm not going to the party. Of all my wives, you're the least agreeable. But still alive. Hmm. Would you go away for a million dollars, tax-free? You want it all, don't you? I deserve it all. Your jealousy isn't tax-free, and your possessiveness is maddening. If ever a man had grounds for divorce... But can't prove them. The time will come. You'll slip up one of these days. Think so? If I live long enough. You remember the fun we had when you poisoned me? <laughs> Something you ate, the doctor said. Yes. Arsenic on the rocks. Annabelle, you'd do it again if you thought you could get away with it, wouldn't you? Darling, what makes you think that? Something about you. I 
hear that hanging is very uncomfortable, in case you get any more ideas. Now don't let the ghosts and the ghouls disturb you, darling. Darling, the only ghoul in the house is you. And don't sit up all night thinking of ways to get rid of me. It makes wrinkles. Wrinkles? That's all he's got? He's threatening her with pillow face? He's not even as frightening as the My Pillow Guy, mustache notwithstanding. This is what she used on my brother and her sister. Hacked them to pieces. We found parts of the bodies all over the house, in places you wouldn't think. The funny thing is the heads have never been found. Hands and feet and things like that, but no heads. The wife, probably in a rage, threatened her husband with a knife and then, carried away by hysteria, took a swing at him and simply went on from there. <laughs> she certainly went on. How many people did she kill, Mr. Pritchard? Only two. Her husband and her sister. No one else was here. So there are two loose heads just floating around in here somewhere? Must be referring to the heads from the beginning of the movie. You can hear them at night. They whisper to each other, and then cry. <laughs> Since our host isn't here, would anyone care to mix me a drink? Certainly. What will you have? Good evening. I'm your host, Frederick Lauren. Since we're all strangers to each other, let's get acquainted with the drink, shall we? Mr. Lauren. I advise you to call this party off now. The ghosts are already moving, and that's a bad sign. Let me apologize for my wife. She'll join us later. What do you have? Scotch and. Doctor? I'll have the same. Now, before the party begins, let's go over the details. The caretakers will leave at midnight, locking us in here until they come back in the morning. Once the door is locked, there's no way out. The windows have bars that a jail would be proud of, and the only door to the outside locks like a vault. There's no electricity, no phone, no one within miles, so no way to call for help. Like a coffin. So if any of you decide not to stay for the party, you must let me know before midnight. Of course, if you leave, I shan't be able to pay you anything. I'm interested in your reasons for this uh, party, aside from the pleasant company. Ghosts, Doctor. I think everyone wonders what they would do if they saw a ghost. And now my wife has given us all the opportunity to find out. Hmm. Amusing. Ghosts, etc., being only creations of hysteria, your party should be a success. Well, Pritchard here promises us genuine ghosts. Seven now. Maybe more before morning. That's cheerful. Four men have been murdered in this house. And three women. You planned your party very well, Mr. Lauren. Four of us are men, three are women. And a ghost for everybody. <laughs> well, Pritchard, why don't you take us on a tour through the house and let's see what happens, huh? If you can tear yourselves away from the bar, them's the only spirits this crowd's interested in. See that stain? Blood. A young girl was killed here. And whatever got her wasn't human. Don't stand there. What do you mean? Where? Too late, they've marked you. Ridiculous. The roof probably leaks. Oh, that must be what it is. Who would want to haunt me? I would say any self-respecting male ghost. I hope it doesn't come back. Well, Mr. Pritchard, you're the life of the party. He hasn't even started yet. Wasn't there a man who threw his wife into a wine vat or something? That was in the cellar. There's been a murder almost every place in this house.
All this belonged to a Mr. Norton, who didn't die here. He was electrocuted later. Mr. Norton did a good deal of experimenting with wines, but his wife didn't think it was any good. So he filled the vat with acid and threw her in. She was supposed to stay down, but the bones came up. It's a funny thing, but none of the murders here were just ordinary, just shooting or stabbing. They've all been sort of wild, violent, and different. Look out! God, she didn't fall in. You mean there's still acid in there? everything with hair and flesh. It just leaves the bones. Is it soup yet? Yeah, it's an old joke. But I bet you did not know, tomato soup's high in acid content. The only known protection is grilled cheese sandwiches. So watch out. Dry and dusty down here. Well, there's a, a cure for that upstairs. <laughs> Come on. How'd you get invited to this party? No. Let him go on. I mean, what did he tell you? Mr. Lawrence said everybody would get $10,000. But he didn't say anything about being locked in. No. Uh, he just made a deal with me on the phone, but nothing about having to stay. Aren't you going to stay? If I don't, I lose $10,000. I'm going to stay, too. $10,000. Yeah. You believe in ghosts? I don't know. Well, I agree with what that doc says. You can spook yourself. I've done it in planes. Seen things that weren't really there. Or were they? <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do with your 10000 If we get it. What do you mean, if we get it? Won't he pay us if we stay? Ah, oh, sure he will. 10000 is no more to him than a nickel is to us. We were in an automobile accident. Now I'm the only one in the family who can make any money. Boy, I've never seen so many doors. Closet. Bottles. Does it go anywhere? Lance! Now, I could be wrong. But I think the flame is supposed to go out at the same time that the light fades. Of course, now that basic biology has taken a hike, I suppose physics doesn't matter no more, neither.
Lance, I mean. Wait, come on. Did she say Lance is gone? Gone where? Money won't cure. I must have, must have bumped my head. And the only way you could bump your head in here is to run head on into the wall. You didn't do that, did you? Let's get a bandage on that. I wonder why they didn't kill him. He didn't bump his head. They hit him. They? Nora, when you came in, you said something about a ghost. There was something. What did it look like? Well, it, it was wearing a black thing that went all the way to the floor. Weren't you a little frightened at the time? Well, yes. That, Mr. Lauren, is hysteria. But then, Doctor, how do you explain what happened to Lance? Was that hysteria, too? You better get that checked in a day or so. Thanks, Doc. Ghosts are coming closer, Mr. Lauren. You really believe in your pet ghost, don't you, Pritchett? Before the night's over, you will, too. Would you like a drink, Lance? Uh, no, thanks. I'd like one. Scotch and. This chick is all into her scotch. As am I, if you catch me drift. For her, it's just fun and drinking games until somebody gets killed. You get it? Speaking of kilts, don't I ever wear one when you're bungee jumping? Take it from me. Mr. Lauren, are you really going to pay anyone who stays all night? Certainly. Ten thousand dollars. Will there be much red tape or delay? You in a hurry, dear? <laughs> Frankly, yes. Or frantically. There you are, my dear. Someone or something was in here when I came in. But where? And if the door was locked, how did it get out? What you saw might have been a ghost, Nora, but what was in here with me was no ghost. I don't know. I was so scared. That sound different to you? Yes. Tap, 
Which way did she slink off to? You wouldn't want to leave her home a crone. Her personality is so dull. You should trade her in for a newer battle axe. No need to haggle over price, neither. Mmm, haggis. Oh, that's making me hungry. <laughs> Where'd it come from? From in here. What if it ran out of here? I'd have seen it. Lance, it doesn't run. It just floats. Yeah, but uh, why didn't I see it? You don't believe me. <laughs> Can I? I'm Annabelle Lauren. You must be Miss Manning. I realize this is a very unusual and I'm afraid very dull party. Wouldn't you like to freshen up? This is your room. Depressing, isn't it? I doubt if I'll spend much time here. It's going to rain. Perfect atmosphere for my husband's party. Why did you come here? He said he'd give me $10,000. Why did he pick you? I don't know. My supervisor just came and said I'd been invited. How long have you known my husband? I just met him tonight. So? Why you? What were you doing wandering around by yourself? Well, I was in the cellar with Lance, Mr. Schroeder, and I just left, that's all. Don't do it again. Don't go anywhere in this house by yourself. Now, fix your face and I'll come by for you in a few minutes. But I... You're in danger. We all are. But who? I hope for your sake you never find out. I'm Annabelle Lauren. Were you looking for something? Uh, not exactly. Are you the doctor? No. No, I'm Lance Schroeder. The pilot. You've hurt yourself. Oh, it's uh, just a bump on the head. Which is my room? I believe this is it. Thank you, Mrs. Lauren. Annabelle Lance. You were with the young girl in the cellar. Why was she so upset? Was she? And you don't look like the type to go around bumping his head. What really happened, Lance? Well, Nora thought she saw a ghost, but uh, I didn't see anything. She was just frightened then. And mad at me, I think. I kidded her about it. I wouldn't joke about anything else that happens here tonight. Now, don't tell me you're taking all this seriously. Aren't you? Well, I'd uh, like to find out what hit me. Lance. If I need help, may I count on you? <laughs> sure, I guess so. Look, what's going on here, anyway? I mean, what is with this party, but... This is no party. He's planning something. Your husband? I wish I knew what it was. Must be pretty big if he's going to lay out 50,000. The money doesn't mean anything. He has a reason for getting us all up here to this dreadful old house. Well, what for? He doesn't even know us. Maybe that's exactly why you're here. Well, what can he get away with? Oh, he thinks that big money like his can get away with anything. 
You know, of course, that I'm his fourth wife. The first simply disappeared. The other two died. Lance, I don't want to join them. You mean he, uh... Oh, his doctor said they died of heart attacks. Two girls in their 20s. Well, what can he do? My husband is sometimes insane with jealousy. Nothing matters to him then. Please be careful. Would he hurt you? He would kill me if he could. all the fun. Nora Manning was almost killed by a falling chandelier. The pilot bashed his head in. Is he badly hurt? The Saturnine psychiatrist bandaged him up. Don't you want to go and console him, as you do most men, in your fashion? You're so clever, Frederick. Yes, I lie awake nights wondering why I married you. It was rather a mistake. You didn't marry me, dear. I married you. Unpleasant, but no mistake. Hurry up. Frederick, for the last time, I'm not going to your party. And for the last time, it's not my party, but yours. And you are going. I am not. Are you ready, dear? No. Are you ready, dear? Yes. Damn you. Would you adore me as much if I were poor? <laughs> no. All you want to be is a lovely widow. It's almost time to lock up the house. And then your party will really begin. I wonder how it'll end. You talking to me? Well, I'm the only one here. You talking to me? Oh, yeah? Okay. Midnight, Nora. We're all going to get together down in the living room. All right, Mr. Lloyd. I'll be right down. Oh, that must be the face Vince got for his wife to put on. Slides and his wife. They've been caretakers here for years. She's blind, you know. I'm not going to stay here. Well, Doctor, it looks like we have a real case of hysteria on our hands. 
I think she's just a little upset, not hysterical. Good evening. Hello, my dear. This is my wife. These are our guests. Ruth Bridges, Dr. Trent. You know Watson Pritchard, of course. Nora Manning, and uh, this is Lance Schroeder. Get me out of here. Now, what about the 10,000? I don't care. He wants to kill me. Who wants to kill you? Mr. Lawrence. May I have your attention, please? I think you all remember the bargain we made about staying all night. $10,000 apiece. If any of you don't survive, $50,000 will be divided amongst the rest of you. If I should die, you will be paid by my estate. When the door is locked from the outside by the caretakers, we'll all be forced to stay in this house until morning. If any of you decide not to stay, you must leave with the caretakers now. You won't have a chance to change your minds later, because there'll be no way to get out. I don't want to stay. Wait. Yet, who told them they could leave? They never leave before midnight. Well, they've gone now. I was going to ask you whether you wanted to stay or not, but it seems that the caretakers have made the decision for you. We're all locked in now. But I don't want to stay. And I'm sorry, my dear, but it's too late now. Darling, haven't you had enough of the silly game? Get some cars up here for these people and let them go home. But pay them first. This is your party, remember? In spite of my wife's faith in my ability to do the impossible, we will all have to stay in this house until 8 o'clock in the morning. But we have some party favors for you in these little coffins. This is my wife's idea. I must say, I think it's rather dangerous. I suppose you all know how to use one of these things, but in case you don't, you just press down on this lever with your thumb and then pull the trigger. You see, they're loaded. These are no good against the dead, only the living. Doctor? Lance? Nora. Go ahead, take it. Miss Bridges. And here's yours, dear. I don't need it. It was your idea. Who knows, you may want to use it on me before this night is over. Throw these guns away. They won't do you any good. I agree with Pritchard on that point, although not for the same reason. Dr. Trent, don't you approve of our little party favors? Suppose Nora had had a gun when she mistook the blind woman for a ghost. I don't think anyone else is going to walk around in total darkness. <laughs> oh, I'm sure we're not going to go running around the house shooting each other, aren't you? Who knows? Fear makes people do amazing things. Nothing goes better with handguns than booze. One way or t'other, you're gonna take a shot. Mr. Pritchard, you said your sister-in-law killed a man and a woman here and cut them up? You said they found hands and feet, but they never found any heads. Would you like to see one of those heads? Would you all like to see one of those heads? Well then, just follow me. Darling, I really don't need this. Just go 
look in my suitcase. Just go look. I think you're a little upset. Would you care for a sedative? Get out! I'd take that as a yes. Get out, all of you! All of you, get out of here and leave me alone! Just get out of here! <laughs> you think it's all right to leave her by herself, Doctor? I wish she'd taken the sedative. Well, what do you suppose she thought she saw? They're closing in on her. Look, Doc, I think somebody ought to stay with her. There could be a million people around her. And if they wanted her, they'd get her. What if he's right? Oh, he's too drunk to know what he's talking about. I wonder. I'll join you in a minute. Do you think it would do any good if you went in and talked to her? Well, do you think there really was a head in her suitcase? I don't know. Thing like that would put me right over the edge. But would you sort of stay up here, I mean, in case she needs help? All right. I'll be in my room. Just call it. Thanks. Are you sure there are only seven people in this house? Positive. Except for the ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts, nor in frightening women. In Nora's case, it's gone far enough, perhaps too far. What do you suggest we do about it, Doctor? Don't frighten her anymore. Well, you might have noticed. That the haunted mansion in this movie is supposed to be a hundred years old. And yet, it was designed by freaking Frank Lloyd Wright. So, I stepped out for a wee bit. Just to remind you what a real demented mansion looks like. Behold, Castle Macabre. You may have noticed as well that I haven't gotten the roof fixed yet. The rocket attack and the following the fire kind of aired the place out. But it's hard to find good workers, or at least to keep them. A couple of them disappeared, you might say. Anyway, for some reason, folks just seem to want to get away from this place. I cannot explain why. But it's ruining me bed and breakfast business. About this. They've taken her. In a little while, she'll be one of them. Where's Nor? Where is she? It's too late. It's too late. You'll never find her again. Pritchard, if you know where she is, you better tell me now. She's gone. She's gone to them. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know, for a haunted house, this is becoming quite the popular place to hang out.
Nora? She's dead, Mr. Lauren. Your wife hanged herself. Suicide. I don't know. It, it was dark, but it must have been him. Has anybody seen you since he left you? I heard some people in that room, but I went by and nobody saw me. Mrs. Lauren is dead. But how? Lauren said she committed suicide, but I think somebody killed her. Him? I'm sure you've come to the same conclusion I have. Yeah, I think so. Well, let's all have a meeting, discuss what to do. The living room? Okay, in a minute. I've got to go downstairs. Now, you lock yourself in here and don't let anybody know you're here. He thinks you're dead. He won't come here. And I'll get back as soon as I can. You'll be all right. And if you have to, you use it. She's so so. What are you doing in here? Wait. Don't we? What do you mean coming in here? I, I didn't want them to take her away. You're drunk. They will if you don't watch her. You're drunk. All right, out with it, Bridget. Why did you come into this room? I'm the only one who understands. Understands what? The... Your wife isn't there anymore. She's already joined them. Look, Bridget, I've had enough of your spook talk. Get out, you sot, and don't come back into this room again.
Where's what's her name? Nora. I didn't disturb her since I don't think this concerns her. No, you're right. Mr. Lauren, isn't there some way we can get out of this house now? No, none at all. We could try breaking out. The only door to the outside is made of steel. The bars of the windows are set in solid stone. We've got to stay. I'm not afraid of your ghosts, Bridget. But I am afraid. When we came here a few hours ago, the only thing we had in common was the $10,000 we'd get. Now, however, we share something else. The death of Mrs. Lauren. So far tonight, one of us was almost killed by a falling chandelier. One of us was mysteriously slugged. One of us has been driven to the brink of absolute hysteria. And one of us is dead. Were these accidents? Suicide? And we must stay here for six more hours. Six hours? Six of us. Time enough. Who will be next? How will it happen? Let me ask you a question, Doctor. You were the first one to see my wife there. Did you also see anything that she could have climbed up on and then jumped? No. Did any of them? There was nothing. How then did she get up there so high? Exactly, Mr. Lauren, how? She couldn't have pulled herself up there. She couldn't have dropped from the ceiling. Do you think your wife killed herself? No. She was murdered by one of you. Or you, Mr. Lauren. To deliberately kill someone, you must have a reason. We were all strangers to your wife. Only you had a motive for murder. What husband hasn't at some time wanted to kill his wife? What husband hasn't had a thousand opportunities to do it in such a way so that he'd never be suspected? I'm not such a fool as to hang my wife from a ceiling by a rope. The fact remains that you, or one of us, murdered Mrs. Lauren. And that's a matter for the police. So how do we get the police? That's my point. We can't until morning. What began as a silly party given by an eccentric has now involved us all in murder. For once, Pritchard may be right. If another murder's in the works, let's stop it now. Another murder? Why not? Maybe one of us saw too much. Why should even a millionaire want to give each of us $10,000 to spend one night in a gloomy old house? To see some ghosts have a party? No. Have you finished trying me, Doctor? And is the verdict guilty of murder? Oh, this isn't getting us anywhere. Somebody killed Mrs. Lauren, we know that. One of us is guilty and the rest of us are innocent, okay. Now what we have to do for the next six hours is protect ourselves from each other. Do you really think... I don't think anything. I just know that I'm going to my room. And if anybody comes in, I'll shoot him. Or her. And if we all stay in our rooms, we'll be safe. Because the innocent will have no reason to leave his room. And the guilty will admit his guilt if he or she does. And we all have guns. And we're all agreed. Oh, I wish this night were over. Brooms, guns. I tell you, it doesn't make any difference. They aren't through with us yet. You know, when Wilmer there said that all the deaths were weird, he didn't mention that they were all from born of the death. Now for the gripping good night scene. What's the use of saying good night?
Good night. There goes her stigmata again. Somebody alert the Pope. Or maybe a plumber. Or maybe it's just her DTs. Turns out she drinks scotch and hallucinations. Yeah, they're in a pickle, all right. But could be worse. Could be raining. How can you be so sure? She tried to warn me, ask me to help her. The doc thinks he's going to try and kill one of us. Now, there must be a way out of this place, and I'm going to find it and get the police before he does. I'm going with you. What if he finds out you're alive? No, Nora. You're safer here than any place else. Now just lock yourself in and keep quiet. If I find a way out, I'll come back and get you.
Oh, Kathy's standing at the window looking for Heathcliff. You don't have to be the Bronte sisters to see that this ain't exactly Wuthering Heights. I mean, it's not that boring. That story's so old-fashioned, it's a Brontesaurus. Turns out it's a haunted ice skating rink. An admission of guilt, Doctor? Certainly not. There's either somebody else in this house or one of us has left his room. Did you hear anything? Organ music? That. And someone walking. You got your... Ready? You look downstairs and I'll look up here. Why not together? There may be only minutes, seconds left of someone's life. Why waste time? Almost over, darling. Every detail was perfect. What's happening? We've done it. A perfect crime. Beautiful. Has she killed him? Not yet. But she will. Get me out of this hanging harness. What's taking that girl so long? What time is it? At first, I couldn't get Nora to want to protect herself with a gun. 
After you appeared at the window, everything began to work just as we had planned. You were wonderful. Just the touch that finally drove her into complete hysteria. It'll be worth all of our planning, darling. Where's Nora now? What's happening? On her way to the cellar. So scared she'll shoot the first thing that moves. And Frederick? On his way to the cellar, too. David, are you sure none of them will suspect us? Of what? An hysterical girl accidentally shoots somebody? Who would suspect that we planned it that way, that we drove her to it? What about my suicide? We're just a ghost party gag. We'll claim it was a dummy since I'm the only one who touched you. And the caretakers? Well, they had no idea what they were really doing. Well, what about Nora? She's not stupid, you know. Darling, believe me, everything we've planned is working perfectly. Nora is sure Frederick murdered you. She thinks Frederick attacked her in the cellar, not me. And now Nora's almost out of her mind with fear. The heads, the music, you're hanging. I tell you, when Frederick walks in there, she'll shoot him. It's taking too long. David, you ought to be there. When you hear the shot, come down to the cellar. I guess the lesson is crying does pay. Well, then why is it never pawned out for me? David? David?
Christ, you've got it all. Everything I have, even my life. But you're not going to live to enjoy it. Come with me, murderess. Come with me. Mr. Skinny Malinky's Revenge. Can't say that I blame him. I've been thinking all along he is a wee bit sweet on her. Both of them hanging about all over the place. The acid bath just gives them that much more in common. started your game of murder that I was playing too. There must be some way to get in here. Well, it's right along here somewhere. Lamb! I've shot Mr. Lorne. He's down in the wine cellar. Alive? I don't think so. He's alive. You didn't shoot anyone, my dear. I loaded your gun with blanks. I can tell you all now. Trent and my wife were planning to kill me. They failed. Trent tried to throw me in the vat. My wife stumbled and fell. I'm ready for justice to decide if I'm... Innocent or guilty. Now there are nine. There'll be more, many more. Coming for me now. And then they'll come for you. <laughs> So, it was all just a clever crime investigation. But what about the doors that open and shut on their own? And what about that extra head just laying about? And the bleeding ceiling? And what about that rope creeping in through the window to grab at the lassie's ankles? I suppose that was just another loose end flinging about 
whipping the audience across the face. It makes me mad. Uh, anyway, at least this film shows the amazing kind of puppetry you can do with just a couple of long strings and a winch. But who knew Vince there have that much talent? You don't have to be John Malkovich to see he could give Sid and Marty Croft a run for their money. Oh boy, are these films getting to me with their plots as thin as paper. A tissue of flickering images, scotch taped together with drinking scenes and lame special effects. Weak attempts to shock and disgust an unexpected audience. Like it was funny or something. Well, they're going to have to come up with something better than a skeleton on a string. That's all I got to say. Ah, I guess I'll see you next time. Did you ever get the feeling you were being watched?